Hi there, welcome to Peace Sequel Mao. Now, it is a fundamental fact of life that things shot cinematically automatically look cooler. Take this sign, for example. Shot by itself, it's, it's boring, it's dull. But shoot it cinematically and it immediately transforms into a badass. Cinematic footage, like most things these days, can be done on your phone. And the 2020 cinematic footage checklist includes, but is not limited to, 24 frames per second playback, a shallow depth of field, dramatic colour grading and slow motion. But nothing will give you cinematic footage more than a wide aspect ratio. And you Lanzi, I've got that one covered. This is you Lanzi's anamorphic lens. With its matte black aluminium alloy construction and boxy shape, it looks both futuristic and retro at the same time. Being a 1.33, the lens converts your phone's 178 aspect ratio into that sweet, sweet widescreen 235. And if you look through the front of the lens, the aperture looks oval, which of course it isn't. You can also see these blue lens flares that anamorphic lenses are famous for. So in typical Ulanzi fashion, this thing not only looks great, but it feels great as well. I just want to look at it and mess with it. But of course it wasn't made for looking at and messing with, it was made for this. Optically, this thing is spot on. The only potential drawback is how loose this rotation mechanism is. But when it rotates like, even slightly, it's so easy to catch because the image distorts so much. Apart from that, it's just so much fun to use. The shots look epic and you feel epic just shooting with it. And after watching this review, if you do decide you would like to purchase this Ulanzi lens, then just click the link in my description. It'll take you straight to Amazon and it'll help me out. So, some people have said that their Ulanzi anamorphic lens came in one of these black cases, whereas mine personally came in one of these metal compartmentalized cases. For me, it doesn't really matter. Having used both of these, they both do what they're supposed to, which is keep my stuff organized and protected. And along with the cleaning cloth, you also get two styles of clips, the clothes peg and the camel's hump. And while it is nice that Ulanzi have included two different styles of clips, personally, as I've said in other reviews, I would recommend just ditching the clips and getting one of these cases instead. I just find the clips very fiddly and they partially block the screen and they can easily slip out of alignment as well. With the case, you don't have this added bit sticking out on the side of your phone or blocking your screen. It's also far more secure for the lens and it protects your phone while shooting. And if you have multiple Ulanzi lenses and you can just swap them out 
really easily. Your Lanzi's case will set you back another £14 or $13, but for the reasons I've mentioned, I think it's a great investment. So let's say you're completely new to the world of anamorphic and you decide to order this as your first anamorphic lens. Excited, you take delivery, unbox it, attach it to your phone, fire up the camera app and you see this. With an anamorphic lens, this vertical squeezing is normal. It's exactly what allows you to get that cinemascope widescreen look without cropping in to 235. So it's exactly what you're paying for. And you can either de-squeeze it in editing software later, or you can shoot with it de-squeezed in an app like Moment or Filmic Pro. So while video might be its forte, don't underestimate its photo abilities. Use it with the excellent Moment app to capture some unique long exposures and time lapses, which whether you're a filmmaker or a hobbyist will impress people. Just be aware that if you are shooting in RAW, the Moment app can't de-squeeze the RAW file like it can with the video. So you will have to do it yourself in Photoshop later. And as a little bonus, stick around until the end of this video and I'll show you exactly how to do it. So it looks great both on the outside and through the viewfinder. It's well built, it's well priced, and at 64 pounds or $59, puts it perfectly in the range of hobbyists who have wanted to try anamorphic but until now, I've just been put off by the typically much higher cost of entry. But please don't think that an anamorphic lens is a one and done cinematic solution because it's definitely not. Because of how it looks and how it distorts, I would recommend teaming it with a telephoto. So then you can hit your audience with bam, anamorphic establishing shot. And then you can cut to the close up details with the telephoto. And now that Lockdowns around the world seem to be easing a little. There are scenes out there just begging, begging for that cinematic treatment. And you can oblige them with a kit that fits in your pocket. And if you've enjoyed this review and have found it helpful, just click the Pistico Mel logo on the screen to subscribe and feel free to check out some of my other reviews. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Stay curious, back around. So since you've stuck around, as promised, I will show you how to de-squeeze a RAW file in Photoshop. So let's jump onto the Mac where you'll see my DNG files are here, taken with the Moment app with the anamorphic lens. And if we open them into Photoshop, they're going to open in Camera Raw first, which is exactly what I want. So the edits that I've previously made are already here, which is why I like Camera Raw. The picture started off like that, which don't judge me by my raw files, by the way. Uh, these are the edits. So once you've played around and edited your photo, then you can open the image in Photoshop. And then what you want to do is you want to adjust the long edge of the dimensions. So if you've got a landscape image like me, then that's the width. If you have a portrait image, then that would be the height. So to show you what I mean, you just go to image go to image size and then make sure this lock icon is unticked because or, or unchecked because if you don't whatever you put in one box will affect the other box because Photoshop's going to try and keep the aspect ratio the same so because I've got a landscape photo I want to multiply this value here by 1.33 because the anamorphic lens is a 1.33 so you can just however you want to do it 4032 times 1.33 and you can round it up to a whole number so that's 5363 and if you had a, a portrait image like I said you would do this value here so 5363 5363 and then just press OK and then Photoshop will apply those new dimensions to your photo which will now give you the nice widescreen anamorphic look. And there you have it, really simple. Hope that helped.